Anyway, um, you know, Ric Flair is going to be profiled on the <laughs> this week. Uh, apparently the day after Christmas is the premiere of what is the title becoming Ric Flair or being Ric Flair. I'm funding Ric Flair. Hey, come on. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a WWE produced piece, uh, a that, uh, piece, they call them. Well, no, now we don't know that because uh, there's been some tantalizing quotes in the, in the preview or the trailer, as they say in the biz. But uh, we got to talk about it. We are recording, and we'll talk about this in a, in a second, but we're recording uh, this show today, obviously. No, we recorded this show yesterday. We're recording this show right now. And then for Christmas week, we're going to have a variety of omnibus releases and special programming. But the next time that we do some live cut-ins and clips, uh, especially if any big news takes place where we got to talk about this documentary, but flair says it's going to blow the 30 for 30 on him away. Now it, it's going to almost have to be more complimentary. Uh, so we will see what happened. But I'm, I'm well, now, you know, it's true. It would almost no, happen. I mean, he says it'll blow it away. He, is there anyone more full of shit than Ric Flair? About now, everything? come on now. Yeah, this one that's going to be nice to me is going to blow away the one that painted a dark picture of me. Now, see, now, see, shame on you, Brian Last. If you're trying to put the mouth on this documentary before you've said, what's going to happen? Are you going to have to come back out here and eat crow if they include all of Rick's faults and foibles as well as his fame and fortune? We'll see. If there's a five-minute section about him flashing women or hitting them with his penis unsuspectingly... How much time we'll do you think this thing has? They've got to get everything in. They've only got a couple hours. I don't think they can give proper time to bopping people on the head with... with a... well, nevertheless. There should be a disclaimer at the end of it. Ric Flair was paid this amount of money to be here and this amount of money to say nice things about this. Now, there how did we well, disclaimer but to say nice things about himself? We paid him to say nice things about himself. I don't know. Now, was he paid to be a part of this? One wonders. I wonder if that's the case. That would that was Wasn't it last year he said he would never do anything with WWE ever again if Nick Khan was there? I don't think Nick was in the room at the time that they shot this. He wasn't any. I think he was back. He, he only runs the company. He only runs the company. <laughs> he, he didn't have anything company. to do with his shoot. <laughs> well, no. Now here's an interesting. Is it? Uh, we've got to check into this, or we'll have a report on this. Is it? Is it WWE produced or just WWE authorized and in an independent production company, and or like the Teddy Hart thing or WWE. producer? Yeah, so we we've got to we need to make that delineation before we slander anyone in with any specificity. So we'll fi we'll find all that out when we give the report on. The real truth of the matter is, as a fan of documentary films, the documentary that would be great would just be the real Ric Flair story told, just you know, wham bam, here it all is without any cooperation. Just here's the fucking story. We all know the story. Here's here's what it is. That would be amazing. But when it's going to be another, you know. We'll see. If I'm wrong, if I'm proved wrong, I'll say it, but I kind of have a good feeling I know what this is going to be before I see it. Do you think the best documentaries on anyone or anything are done when the person is already dead and can't be a part of it? When, it's, when Ken Burns does the history of the the Negro leagues in baseball or the national parks or the whatever the fuck. And they're, they're giving the unvarnished history of here's what actually happened rather than, well, here's this guy's best friend and here's his mortal enemy. And here's what he has to say for himself. You know what? I'm a big fan of Walter Isaacson. He's written many great biographies. He did an Einstein biography. Obviously he had no contact with Einstein. When Steve jobs found out he was definitely dying and nothing was going to change that. He reached out to Walter Isaacson and said, I want you to do my biography. I want it to be honest. I want it to be everything. I'll give you complete access to me. And the access helped. It was very honest about a lot of the dark side of Steve Jobs, his personal life and everything else. But that's a case where the access helped. But typically, the only thing you wonder when you do something like that is if you have a documentary about Jim Cornette, 
and it's produced 75 years from now. And there's no one in the documentary that actually knew Jim Cornette or knew people that knew Jim Cornette or even listened in real time. Like, there's nothing. There's no... Well, I would cooperate still. Well, you'd, you'd be long gone by then. Well, now, wait a minute. You're only giving me another 70 years? Long, long, long gone. But the uh. point is, you know, then you have a different evaluation of what was happening all these years ago by people who weren't even there. So it does change things, whether you have the cooperation or not, but it doesn't necessarily mean something will be good or bad. But it does also give you the historical perspective that, well, in, you know, 36 years after all this happened, we discovered that Bruce Wayne really was indeed the Batman or whatever. So then you get to know how the story actually comes out and the impact it had on and what, what, in what way it shaped future events in that genre or whatever. Like the real-time Watergate coverage, you know, which led into the book, uh, and then, of course, the movie, All the President's Men, that coverage has been expanded, and of course now we know who Deep Throat was, but by and large, that's still the coverage, you know, no, nothing's been debunked or anything, it's not like Woodward and Bernstein, the movie may have done all sorts of shit, but no one says like Woodward and Bernstein's <laughs> coverage was bullshit, but we've just expanded what we know, so there's a case of the real-time story being in print. And it worked out. But I mean, when you read like old baseball stories from the 60s or something, in real time, a lot of those writers were friends or drinking buddies with the players or just drinking buddies with anyone who would drink with them. And, you know, it's a different kind of coverage than you would get years later. Well, a lot of those reporters were just just old souses, just hanging around the bars, trying to trying to get scoops. 